Finding big fish in shallow water is exciting. Whether you locate it from rise form, surface disturbance, or by sighting it in the water as a shape, its movement, or as a smudge, these trout are there for a reason. To feed, to rest, or endure warm water conditions. Hopefully it's there to feed. If you see it moving about, swaying or rising, that's great news. Even better, the ever-present caddis of late spring to mid-fall offers us a great dry fly starting point. On popular rivers with moderate to high angling pressure, these fish are usually spooked out of shallow water by anglers walking through without thought to their presence. Early mornings and late evenings are best to find them in tight, long after or before anglers get on with their day. Drift boat anglers casting tight to shore with big streamers and indicators will also spook these fish out of shallow lies into deeper cover. Anxiety is high when so exposed and these fish don't stick around long if disturbed. When targeting these fish in shallow, it's imperative to walk slowly, only getting into the water to best position to cast long leaders with small dry flies and dropper nymphs. Of course, these fish are extremely adept at following flies and seriously inspecting even the smallest flies on light tippets to ensure their safety, and they often eat gingerly or swing around your flies prior to eating, making hook sets difficult. Right at the top end of a, a long kind of shallow riffle leading into basically a hundred yard long uh, run. And the run gets really deep, all sorts of great rocks. Um, but right down at the head, uh, right off this rock offshore, what happens is you get these rainbows that'll cycle around and then come up the, just up along the shoreline seam and they'll stage just at the head of it. There's a good one right there on shore right now. If I had my stuff together. I see him. A, yeah, he's a, he's a rod length offshore. And if we watched him, um, he'll move. Actually, why don't you just do that? Get in on him with the camera and just yeah. follow him as he goes to the top. And he's actually moved up just behind that big rock on shore there. And now he's pushing out. And what these fish do will come up the seam station hold for a few seconds few minutes whatever it is feed 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 and then they'll push out and that's just a cycle it's a, a built-in protection mechanism because they use the broken overhead water as protection from predators up above but a 26 27 inch 25 inch rainbow like that stands out like a sore thumb and now he's just pushing across and he's gone about two two rod lengths off the shore so my objective here is i know that I could fish, fish, fish all the way up and nymph and dropper and maybe get a hopper eat along the way, but I'm specifically targeting just here. And by the time I get my setup done and ready to fish, maybe he buggers off. Maybe it takes five or 10 or 15 minutes to come back. But I know that if I wait for the fish, I can ambush the fish when it comes to me and I can keep all of my emotions and actions and, and, and I won't move. My arm will stay low, um, and it'll just kind of be a just a rolling flip of a cast to feed the fish, and put my dry dropper set up just above him by about two, three feet. Let it drift in, let it drift about four feet downstream of him, and then roll back and on the water again. So my setup, as always, I'm going to go with about a 14-foot leader down to three, maybe four x. I'm going to put a small caddis, elk hair caddis on. And I'm going to start off about, I should put about 14 inches down to a small bead-headed uh, mayfly nymph. There's some PMDs, there are some trichos. I don't want to go with a size 20 bead-head dropper if I don't have to. I may have to do that, but I'm going to start off uh, just dry dropper and see if I can't get that guy just to come up just a couple inches and take my nymph. Pretty cool race it.
so that's the real, uh, you know, it can get a great cast and drift right to the fish. You feed the fish and the thing comes up and it wiggles and you think that your dry fly pauses ever so momentarily. And is that fish got your nymph or is that just a wave action on your dry fly dragging? But that fish came up, followed the nymph for probably two feet and you go, okay, so he obviously liked it. He looked at it. Uh, did he have it? I don't know. Uh, should I go with the same nymph? I'm gonna I'm gonna drift the same nymph through there one more time, and we're gonna see if he doesn't eat um, one or two on the next one or two casts. Then I'll have to change my uh, dropper. Nymph. Okay, so I missed that one. Ugh. Same thing happened again. Put it in there, it was a great drift, and the fish dropped. And what I saw was the fish kind of turned, kind of did a one of these, and in that time that he did the little button hook, my dry fly went down. And I, and I went, ugh, and I, and I knew he was facing right at me. Set the hook because I had to, but it popped right out, and the fish bugged right, right out to the main current. Now you got a choice. Is that fish done? Uh, I'm gonna say no. We're gonna wait five or 10 minutes. Maybe that fish, maybe a different fish will move up and occupy that prime spot. Uh, now that he's gone, I'm hoping he comes back because that was a really nice big fish. Do you find value in our free sharing of knowledge and experience and wanna support us? Gain access to our extended length ad-free videos as well as our in-depth producer's notes that turn every video into an in-depth fly fishing class. Join our Patreon group today.